It's Phil's Pop Culture Podcast. Watching television, watching television. A dynamite place to be. Dynamite! Sponsored by Vandalay Industries, importers and exporters of fine latex products since 1992. And now, the man who taught Frank Burns how to eat worms, here's your host, Phil Kahn. And thank you, John Meany, wherever you are. I am indeed Phil Kahn, and I very warmly welcome you to the latest edition of Phil's Pop Culture Podcast. I'm extremely excited about today's guest, Jeff Anison. Jeff and his partner, Paul Scanlon, are co-founders of Legion M, the world's first fan-owned entertainment company, and an organization of which I'm a proud investor. I recently had a terrific conversation with Jeff to find out more about his background, Legion M itself, and their past, current, and future slate of really creative, unique, and groundbreaking projects. Let's listen together as Jeff tells us all about a company that is more than just a fun idea, but the foundation of an organization with the potential to forever change Hollywood. Hi, Jeff. Thanks so much for being on the program today. Oh, my God, it is the privilege of a lifetime to be on your show, Phil, and it has nothing to do with the fact that you just asked me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. I didn't feed you those words. I'm sure they're heartfelt. <laughs> yeah. No, joking aside, I, it's a real pleasure to talk to you today. It's so great to have you on. Now, before we get into Legion M, I wanted to talk a little bit about your background so people can get a chance to know you a little bit. And I do want to call attention to the Legion M website. It's at legionm.com. And I'm sure all the listeners will check it out after they listen to the podcast. But I really like the bios that you and your co-conspirator, Paul Scanlon, have on there. Uh, first of all, your nickname is Turbo. It says that your superpowers are limit smashing and trail breaking. Arch rivals yep. are telemarketers, conference calls, stupid rules. Your weaknesses are board games, fast cards, cold pizza, and knock knock jokes. Wow, I, I guess that says it all, but tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background. <laughs> well, I think it pretty much sums it up in that bio, you know, which we spent uh, a lot of time and money uh, to develop. But uh, now I'm a um, serial entrepreneur. I was uh, actually originally a mechanical engineering major in college, and I spent the first few years of my career uh, working. Uh, actually, I started off designing theme park rides, uh, oh. which was really cool. Um, I worked on Jurassic Park, the ride at Universal Studios. No way. Yeah, I did. Um, it, it's actually kind of funny. You know, they're just in the process right now of reskinning that ride. And I'm very uh, around Jurassic World. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very worried because the effect that I worked on, um, and again, this was my first job out of college, but uh, was um, uh, one that involved a falling Ford Explorer. And there aren't any Ford Explorers in Jurassic World. I mean, there is, you know, but uh, I'm a little bit worried that the uh, the effects that I designed for that ride are are, are maybe going to no longer be there. So Aww. we'll have to see. Keep our uh, keep keep my fingers crossed that that uh, that that retains. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, I I did that for a few years, and then I worked in the toy industry for a few years. I worked at Hasbro, um, designing Spin Pops. Um, oh. I worked at a a speculative toy design company where I was the proud inventor of whistle missiles and fart darts and a bunch <laughs> of <laughs> crazy I won't stuff ask. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, but then uh, in 1999, I got tangled up with a group of friends, including Paul Scanlon, the co-founder of Legion M, uh, and another fella. Uh, and the three of us started a company called Moby TV, and we were the um, uh, the first ones in the world in 2003 to launch live television uh, on a cell phone. Cool. Um, you know, that kind of pulled me into uh, the startup world. It also pulled me kind of out of the mechanical engineering world and more into, you know, development and web apps. Uh, and then since then, I've been a serial entrepreneur and Legion M is my, the third company that I've, that I've co-founded. Uh, and Paul uh, has been involved with all three of them. I know one of them was New York Rock Exchange. What's that all about? 
Uh, that was really cool. It was actually a little bit of a precursor to Legion M. The whole idea was, what if you could invest in a rock star? Like, if you went out, you heard this band, and you're like, oh, my God, these guys are going to be huge. How can I buy stock in them? Um, and it's a really sort of cool opportunity because, you know, there's so many artists out there, and they're looking for funding so that they can, you know, record their next album or go on a tour or whatever. And, um, you know, they have passionate fan bases that want to support them and be a part of them. And, you know, some of them go on and do amazing things. And so it's a, it's a very cool sort of opportunity. Uh, but it, um, we launched that company back in like 2013, 2014 sort of time frame. Um, uh, and so uh, it was actually just a few years before the Jobs Act actually got implemented. Mm. And because of that, you know, it was just probably, to be honest, a little bit before its time. Um, and so we ended up kind of taking it in a bit of a different direction uh, because it was not possible to, um, you know, issue stock uh, security and that sort of thing. And so, but a lot of the learnings from that company, um, I think, kind of informed and certainly made us very aware of what was happening with the Jobs Act so that, um, you know, that movie, that company was kind of wrapping up in 2000 and uh, late 2015, early 2016. And, you know, Paul and I just saw this amazing opportunity um, to, you know, leverage the Jobs Act uh, in entertainment. And that was the uh, that's kind of the origin story of Legion M. Now, Legion M is the world's first fan owned entertainment company, and I am a proud investor. I was able to get in in the third round and I know the fourth round is pending and we'll get into that in just a minute and we can tell the folks how they can get involved. But why don't you give us a thumbnail sketch of what Legion M is all about? Yeah, well, it's the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. And the way that I describe it, it's kind of like everybody, like all the biggest film fans in the world, pooled their money and said, let's create an entertainment company of our own. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it is pretty simple. It's, it's you know, the, the fundamental premise is that if you've got an entertainment company that's owned by a large audience of fans, you have a fundamental competitive advantage when your projects are coming to market. Uh, when one of our movie comes out, we know that uh, most of our investors are going to be there and they're going to be there opening night and they're going to be bringing their friends and they're going to be talking about it on social media. Like we've got this amazing opportunity to create the sort of grassroots buzz that a studio would kill for, uh, but money can't buy. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's also other ways that you can leverage this amazing superpower, which is your body of investors, all of these right now, we've got over 10,000 investors. Wow. But, uh, you know, all of these people that are part of the community, uh, we use that as a resource to help us make content decisions and um, to, you know, help us uh, scout new intellectual property and, you know, hopefully try and develop the next great franchises. And so it's a very exciting uh, company. It's an exciting opportunity. It's the sort of thing it just became possible. You know, I mentioned the Jobs Act earlier, which is some securities laws that just went into effect a couple of years ago. So, um, like, I don't think that we get credit for being the first ones to think of the idea of a fan-owned company, because I, I, I can't imagine that nobody thought of this idea before. Oh, I'm sure nobody did. You, you, and, you and Paul must have been the first one. Let, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, it's, it, it's kind of funny, because like one of the common questions we get is like, why didn't somebody do this 100 years ago? And, you know, like I said, the answer is it wasn't possible. So we had the good sense um, to recognize the opportunity when the Jobs Act passed uh, and was implemented. And, you know, we're the first ones to jump on it. And uh, we're super excited. You know, our our whole philosophy is like is if you think about it, um, entertainment is a multi-trillion dollar global industry mm -hmm. and it is entirely fueled by the wallets and eyeballs of people like you and me and all of your listeners. Absolutely. Individually, any one of us is just a consumer. Um, but when we band together, we have the power to literally shape the future of Hollywood. Uh, and that's what Legion M is all about. 
Well, I'm very excited about it. Now, Legion M, a lot of people have asked you, gee, what's the genesis of that name? I guess M is the Roman numeral for a million because eventually you want to have a million community members and investors. Is that true? Yeah, that's, the, that's exactly the idea behind it. We were looking for something that, um, you know, we liked Legion just as, as a, you know, the, the connotation that it's an army of people, like this massive, you know, legion of people that, uh, you know, that would be uniting to make this stuff happen. And um, uh, when we realized that M with the bar over it was the Roman numeral for, for one million, I mean, if you think about it, that's a long-term goal. And we know <laughs> it's going to be hard, you know, to get there. Yeah. But if we could... Um, right now, the, the minimum investment for people uh, who decide to invest in Legion M, and you don't have to invest in Legion M. We should talk about that, too. But yeah, you can join for free as a member. There's absolutely no cost. But for the people that like it enough that they want to invest in it, the minimum investment is $100, and the average across everybody uh, is probably around $500. So, you know, if you can imagine a company with 1 million shareholders that have each invested $500, that's $500 million to develop movies and TVs and virtual reality and games, which is enough to play with the big boys. Um, but more importantly, when those projects release, there's a million people standing behind them, which is an incredibly powerful edge. You know, it's the sort of thing we like to say, we can't make a bad movie good. You know, just having people involved with the Legion isn't going to help improve just inherently the quality of the film. But we can make a good film a hit. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of the element that makes Legion M such a powerful business model. Like, it's a really fun idea. And a lot of people go, oh, yeah, this is awesome. You know, I get to go behind the scenes. I get to get involved with all these projects. Yeah. And I think a lot of people look at it just from kind of the fun part of it. But the whole underpinning of it is that it's an incredibly powerful business model that gives us an edge when our projects come out, no matter what we're doing. We've got this edge that, you know, I think in a lot of differences can mean the difference between failure and success for a lot of things. Indeed. And I know you're either helping to produce or helping to promote a slate of not just movies, but TV shows, even digital content. And we'll go into some of the projects in just a little bit. But as I mentioned, I was an investor during round three. Round four is right around the corner. If I have a listener that's getting excited right now and then goes to the website later and reads about all the projects and wants to invest, and I know you said they don't have to invest, and I'm going to have to talk to you off air to say, no, 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 they have to invest. Don't just take them as members. <laughs> we want their money. We need their money. No, just kidding. Um, how can folks get involved, Jeff? Yeah, uh, so it's really easy. If you, if you go to the Legion M website, you can sign up. Um, we, we love the free members and, you know, we've got, like I mentioned, I think we've got about 10,000 investors or sorry, over 10,000 investors. And we probably have close to 40 or over 40, probably close to 50,000, um, in the community overall. Mm -hmm. So part of the reason why we wanted to make it available, um, for free so that people could join as a member I mean, it's two reasons. First of all, like the bigger we get, the more powerful we become. It doesn't matter whether you're a member or an investor. If you're part of the community, every single person that we add adds power to the movement. It's kind of like a, a snowball rolling down a hill. Um, but um, aside from that, you know, investing is a very personal decision. And, you know, um, a lot of people, they may not have the money or they may not understand it. We have a lot of like first time investors that have never invested in anything before. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted to say, look, come in, join the community, be a part of it, see what this is all about. If you decide that you want to invest, that's wonderful. If you don't want to invest, but you still want to be part of the cause, like that's, that's wonderful too. Um, but, uh, but as you mentioned, uh, round four is coming up. We're, we're only allowed to raise money in specific rounds. Uh, everything that we do is regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And so we have to do things like provide audited financial reports. And when we opened this most recent round, we had to file this, it's like a 60 page uh, document with probably about, and I'm not exaggerating, like 300 or 400 pages of appendixes and addendums and financial statements and all that sort of stuff that all had to be filed with the SEC. So like, this is not a, you know, 
fly by your pants sort of organization. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you you, you got to be really buttoned up uh, in order to go through this kind of equity crowdfunding process. But uh, uh, we raise money. We're only open in distinct rounds. Uh, the last round, round three, the one that you participated in, yeah. uh, that opened, I think it was close to six months ago is when that one opened. Um, and we've been closed for a while. And so we're just about to open round four. Uh, we've doubled the number of investors each year. Uh, wow. You know, we founded the company in 2016. Yep. And um, in 2017, we doubled the number of people that we had in 2016. And then we're on track to do that again in 2018. So we're super excited. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I just, you go to the website. Uh, you can also make a reservation right now, which I would highly recommend. Uh, we're going to start processing reservations on Friday, but you can kind of sneak in under the wire right now. And we guarantee that if you make a reservation, like we're going to find a way to ensure that you get to invest. Um, but if you don't, it's on a first come first serve basis. And two out of our three rounds have sold out. Um, and I, you know, that can create challenges and, and problems and people that are frustrated. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than finding something that's amazing and then just, you know, finding out that it's all sold out. So, uh, like I said, if it's the sort of thing that sounds interesting, just go to legionm.com, join us as a free member. And then if you want to invest, uh, there's all the information there that you need to, to figure out how. So try before you buy. It's funny because I did that. I joined as a free member, and it took me about 20 minutes to look through all the projects that you're working on before I signed up. <laughs> I don't know what took me so long. Uh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, you know, it's funny because a lot of people actually get introduced to us via a Facebook ad. Yeah, that's where. that's how I got involved. Yeah, and so, you know, which which is wonderful, and Facebook is so amazing because it allows us to kind of go out and, and effectively target people like yourself that we think are going to be interested in this and get the idea. But at the end of the day, you know, people are responding to an investment advertisement in a Facebook ad. Like, is there anything scammier than that? Right? <laughs> like, it's just, you know, that's why we really go out of our way to – Make sure that people, you know, like do their due diligence. There's a ton of information on our website and you can go look through that 60 page document that we filed with the SEC and you can see all of our audited financial statements and all the data is out there so that people can make uh, an informed um, investment decision if, if it's the sort of thing that they want to get involved with. Oh, yeah, I, I read it covered a cut. Co no, I didn't. I, <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> but I did take a look at all the fun projects. So we've talked about kind of the dry technical details of it. Let's get into the fun part, Jeff. I want to talk about yeah. some of the projects. Now, there are a million of them. And again, if you go to the website, you can check them all out. And they're so so diverse and so clever, a lot of them. But the first one, the, the one that really turned me on, is a movie called Mandy starring the iconic Nick Cage. Tell me more about Mandy. Well, Nick, uh, Mandy is, it's a truly unique movie. It's, it's we, we actually... When we signed up for this movie, which was about, I don't know, six or eight months ago, um, when we agreed to invest in this movie. And this, just to give you some background, it's produced, the main producer is Elijah Wood's company, which is a company called uh, Spectra Vision. Okay. And it's Elijah, and he's got three partners, and they had been producing this movie. We met them very early on in the history of Legion M, and we just hit it off, right? You know, their company and our company share a lot of the same DNA, and we said, we've got to find a project to work on. And they came to us with Mandy and Mandy is not a mainstream movie at all. Like it is a very niche film mm -hmm. and um, uh, so much so that we created a special label for it, for it called Legion Midnight um, because it is a true midnight movie. It's the sort of thing it's, I like to describe it as it's kind of like um, apocalypse now meets clockwork orange, you know, it's yeah. very weird it's violent. It's dark. It's weird. <laughs> you know, and Did you say weird? <laughs> yeah, but, but in, in an amazing way. I mean, it's visually stunning. It is. Um, so many people have 
Like it's it's amazing. The critical reception on this film has been incredible. I think it's ninety. It's over ninety percent. It was ninety two or ninety five on Rotten Tomatoes. I saw that. It got a four minute standing ovation when it went to Cannes Film Festival. It was literally the best reviewed movie at Sundance Film Festival um, when we invested. And um, it's just it's it's such a unique film, and it is so unlike anything else that's out there. Um, and it is so resonated, uh, with so many people. So it's, it's kind of funny because it's an amazing film. Um, I've not taken my wife to see it or my kids to see it, my, my teenagers, just because I know that it, they would hate it. Like it's just <laughs> too much for them. Um, but for the people that like it, like they absolutely love it. So the, the best advice I could give is watch the trailer. I like to say, there, or we like to say that the trailer is like the double black diamond sign in front of a ski run. <laughs> but if you watch that trailer and you're like, that looks good, you're probably going to like it. But if not, you've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> I can see where it's not everybody's cup of tea. There's a lot of blood and gore, but you're right. It is unique. It is weird. And you did mention it was weird twice. One of the coolest things, <laughs> one of the weirdest things that I wanted to ask you about on the side is the Cheddar Goblin. It has become yes. its own little cult classic. T fill, fill the listeners in on what the Cheddar Goblin is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think there's any way to describe what the Cheddar Goblin is. You just have to see it. And I'm, I'm sure by this time, if you do a YouTube search, you can probably see the actual footage from the movie. I don't know that for a fact, but um, I would guess uh, that it is. But it's a... Just a completely um, non sequitur. Uh, I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say it's a it's a commercial that's playing on television um, that occur that occurs after a particularly heavy part of the film. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, it has become its own cultural phenomenon. He's got a there's a Cheddar Goblin Twitter account, which <laughs> I think probably has more followers now than you know pretty much anybody. Oh, that's <laughs> and, so funny. We we did limited edition Cheddar Goblin Halloween masks that were created by the same guy uh, that created the um, the actual Cheddar Goblin itself, which was a really cool thing, and they sold out in like ten hours. Oh, I missed it. A hundred dollars a piece, yeah, and they they sold out like in a snap. Um, it was absolutely incredible. There was a um, there was an article that I read that uh, broke down the cheddar goblin scene and explained in like a, you know, a master's thesis level detail why cheddar goblin was, and this was the title of it. Cheddar goblin is the greatest cinematic moment of 2018. And it wasn't like a joke, like an ironic, like, ha ha. It was yeah. literally this guy, you know, going down the rabbit hole of why this was such an, even though it's this completely random non sequitur sort of thing, yeah. why, how it was such an essential part of the movie and, and the, the layers of meaning that it had. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely incredible. It really is. And some of the other films that you've supported, or we've supported, I should say, Bad Samaritan, which is a thriller movie directed and produced by Dean Devlin of Stargate and Independence Day fame, and Colossal, a monster movie uh, written and directed by Nacho Vigilando, starring Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis. Uh, what other films, or do you want to say a few words about those couple of films or other films you're working on? Yeah, well, the, those are the three that are out right now. Uh, Mandy is available on demand. Like, you can watch it at home. It's going to be on Shudder. It'll be streaming on Shudder. Uh, I'm not sure when that, when that actually happens. But uh, you can watch it in your living room tonight uh, and see for yourself what all the hubbub is about. Mm -hmm. um, Colossal was an amazing movie. That was our first project. That was a little bit of, about a year, year and a half ago with Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis, we were much smaller when we launched that. And it's, you know, like, I think that that's a real hidden gem of a movie. Um, I think it's available on Hulu. If not, it's definitely available on demand. But I would really encourage you to check that one out. That is a much more, um, I mean, mainstream probably isn't the word for it. It's, 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 it's still, a, it's a very unique film. But it's much more accessible than Mandy. It doesn't have the blood. It doesn't have the gore. Um, it's very creative. It's one of the most out-of-the-box movies 
uh, that, you know, that was, that came out that year. It made a lot of critics like best movies of 2017 list. Mm. And, you know, Nacho, Nacho Vigalondo is this real up and coming star. This was his first, uh, like, you know, true English language, uh, feature film, uh, I believe. And, uh, but he is incredible. You can kind of watch out for him in the future. Mm-hmm. And then with Bad Samaritan, like you said, that was Dean Devlin. I mean, you can't yeah. get any bigger than that. Dean, Dean Devlin literally wrote and produced Stargate and um, Independence Day with Will Smith. Yeah. And he created Leverage and The Librarian. Like, this is a guy that has literally made billions of dollars at the box office and has succeeded as well as failed. He's had flops. He was actually, um, he directed Geostorm. Oh. Um, but he has succeeded and failed at levels that so few people in Hollywood ever achieve. It's remarkable. Yeah, I wish I could fail at his level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny when you say that. And, and, and I think Dean recognizes the value of it. It's like when you are an entrepreneur and when you're starting something and when you're trying to do different things and Dean is that guy, um, the failures are just as important as the successes um, in helping you kind of achieve the next step and get to the next level. So we were thrilled, absolutely thrilled about the opportunity to work with, with Dean. Um, it, you know, we had a wonderful time uh, on the film. It's a great film. It stars David Tennant mm. um, in a ma- masterful villain role, kind of a la Kilgrave and Jessica Jones. Like he is an amazingly uh, uh, evil <laughs> villain. It's funny. Like I, I think of David Tennant as the doctor, but uh, yeah, he, yeah. he plays an amazing villain. And uh, anyway, so it's um, uh, and that one is available um, on demand, I know for sure. And uh, I don't know if it's on Netflix or or streaming, but again, if you just search Bad Samaritan, you'll find out uh, you'll find out where it is. So we've got a little something for everybody. I mean, like you said, our our slate is purposely diverse. It's diverse across genre. It's diverse across medium. Like we've been talking about our films. We also have a number of television shows that are in development, nothing that's launched yet. We've got a virtual reality project with Stan Lee and Kevin Smith. Like we, you know, if you want to succeed in Hollywood, um, you know, you need to diversify across genre and across medium. And especially as a fan owned company, we know that there's not, like one project that's going to satisfy everybody in the Legion, but we really aspire to have enough diversity so that there's a little something for everybody to love. And if you don't love one, you can love the next. Now, as of this taping, you mentioned Stan Lee. Stan Lee passed away yesterday. Yeah. and So sad, so sad. But one of your projects, as you alluded to, Icons Face to Face paired up Stan with Kevin Smith. Can you give us a little sneak peek of that whole concept uh, with the Marvel comic legend? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's actually two things that we did with Stan that I think are worth talking about. And, and again, with the news yesterday, it's, it's an extremely poignant time. Um, but I think it, it probably speaks to the power of uh, icons, which is our uh, virtual reality um, series. It was a pilot for what we intend to be a series. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we shot in, it was about 90 minutes worth of footage with Stan Lee, um, and Kevin Smith, uh, in Stan Lee's home. This was about a year and a half ago. It was before his wife passed away. Actually, we got her, uh, as well. Okay. Um, but we shot it in virtual reality. And the whole idea behind it was we wanted to create like, a, a living legacy for Stan, you know, um, Stan's a guy that has influenced countless people around the world and his stories are going to continue to influence countless people for generations to come, the characters and the stories that he created. And, you know, we, we recognized at the time that virtual reality was, um, you know, just at the very beginning, like it's, it's, it's not like mainstream. It's not widely accepted. Um, but you know, everybody sees the potential for it. And there's a lot of people that are betting tens of or hundreds of billions of dollars that the virtual reality is going to be as transformative for entertainment as television was back in the days of radio. 
And so, you know, we kind of spotted this opportunity to say, when are you ever going to get a chance to capture a legend like Stan? Mm -hmm. Um, And so we shot it. We shot it in this excruciatingly high quality virtual reality um, that even today, you know, the, the, the best headset in the world cannot display the resolution of the footage that we caught. We literally captured the footage at the same resolution as the human eye is capable of perceiving. Wow. And we did that because even though there's no headset today that can, that can show it in, in all of its resolution, yeah. um, we know that at some point in the future, and it may be a couple of years or maybe five years, but at some point you're going to slip that thing on and it's going to be like the Oasis where it is visually indistinguishable from real life. Wow. And that's the resolution that we captured it in. Because we wanted to give people the opportunity generations from now to know what it's like to sit down with Stan. So it's, you know, when you slide on the goggles, you are in Stan's. It's like his man cave at his house. <laughs> you know, it is you sitting a couple feet from Stan and a couple feet from Kevin Smith while the two of them talk about everything from the creation of Spider-Man to what was the hardest day of your life and how did you get through it? Mm. Um, it was an incredibly powerful and poignant interview. Like I said, his wife, who was who passed away probably about six or eight months after this happened, um, she was there. The two of them were going to be celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary, if you can imagine that. Aww. And we had both of them describing kind of independently the day that they met and fell in love. Aww. And it was just amazing. And so, you know, we've got the footage. It's something that's 100% owned by Legion M. Um, it's just, I mean, frankly, like sitting in a vault right now because, you know, we're waiting for the technology to catch up uh, with it and we're waiting to find the right distribution partner and, and all that sort of stuff. But it's um, something that we're, immensely proud of. And I think that, um, especially now, like I said, it's, it's more poignant and important, um, than ever. How wonderful. I can't wait to see it. And, and he'll live on forever through this. Uh, What, what a wonderful thing. Yes. No, I, I think that that's absolutely correct. And so, um, the second thing that we did with Stan, which, which I think is worth kind of mentioning right now is, um, about, gosh, six or eight months later after we did this, mm-hmm. um, we had a very special opportunity. We realized that Stan um, had never had his uh, hand and footprints um, immortalized at the Chinese theater you know, on Hollywood Boulevard. That's hard to believe. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's actually kind of remarkable. I mean, I don't know how many of your listeners have had a chance to go there. It's an amazing piece of history. We're not talking about the stars on Hollywood Boulevard. We're talking about the forecourt of the, of, uh, the TCL Chinese Theater, um, which is one of the oldest and most storied theaters. And they started doing this um, honor back in, like, the 1920s. And it's pretty rare. Like, they've only had a couple hundred people you know, in nearly a hundred years have actually received this honor and, you know, have their hand and footprints immortalized there. And, you know, long story short, we realized that there was an opportunity to do it with Stan. Now Mm. you got to understand that every single one of these before the hand and footprint ceremonies were financed and given by a studio that was promoting a film. Uh, they're expensive, right? They have to shut down part of Hollywood Boulevard. They have to bring in grandstands and security, and you've got to pay for, you know, care and maintenance of the concrete, you know, in perpetuity. Like, it's a substantial sum of money that it takes to pull off one of these. And it's always done by the studios, and they do it because they've got, you know, tens of millions of dollars to market a film, so they divert a little bit towards this. It gets a lot of press coverage. Sure. Um, it's usually velvet rope, VIP only, um, and the fans stand outside, and a couple of them can kind of catch a glimpse of what's going on. In our case, we said, well, you know what, what if we united fans to do this? And what we did was we created packages where we created a Stanley tribute book and some T-shirts and posters. And um, people had the opportunity to um, have their name listed 
on the the step and repeat that that was that was behind Stan. If you go look, up, you know Stanley handprint ceremony, you'll see it. He kneels down to do the handprints. There is behind him uh, a little you know a banner that has the names of people that contributed to be a part of it. Cool. We sold tickets so that in our case, the fans were on the inside um, and it still had to be velvet rope because there's only so many seats that you could have there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we gave him that honor. And Kevin Feige came and spoke, the head of Marvel Studios. Chadwick Boseman, this was before Black Panther came out. He spoke. Uh, Kevin Smith spoke. Uh, a whole bunch of you know luminaries were there to, to honor Stan. And then afterwards, we rented out a 9,000-square-foot mansion in the Hollywood Hills and had a house party with Stan Lee. It was absolutely incredible. We had over 500 people there. We had bands. We had DJs. Um, Stan was there, and he spoke. Uh, One of Stan's good friends made him like a seven-layer Marvel cake. We had free beer and, or sorry, booze and food that was provided by sponsors. And the whole thing, like, you know, it wasn't for free, right? You had to buy a ticket to go to this because the money was basically going to fund the honor that we had given him earlier that day. Mm -hmm. But it was this amazing opportunity that allowed fans to have these once in a lifetime experiences while at the same time supporting, um, one of their heroes was Stan. And so, again, it's something that we at Legion M are immensely proud of. And the fact that those footprints, you know, will be there for, you know, now until the end of time, um, I think is something that we, all of us at Legion M and all of the members and investors and everybody that participated can be proud of. Isn't that wonderful? And what a way to honor an icon. And what wonderful memories for you and the rest of the Legion M crew. Oh, boy, that's so terrific, and it's so sad that he passed away. I'm I'm heartbroken over that. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, it's it, it's tough to be sad about, or I, I shouldn't say tough. It's it's kind of funny to be sad about a, a 95 year old man that lived such an amazing, complete life. But it he meant so much to so many people um, that uh, you know. But li- like you said, I mean, you know, he will be with us forever uh, through his words and his stories and his characters. So, indeed. Now, before we went on the air, I said, gee, there are about 125 different projects I could mention. There's Pitch Elevator, there's Field Guide to Evil, Airship Cowboys, uh, Stunt Team Driver, which I think you may have had a hand in probably because one of the things you didn't mention is that you're an amateur uh, race car driver. But anyway, people can go on the website and they can read all about these very cool and, as you mentioned, diverse projects. But why don't we just jump ahead and talk about some projects that are in the offing. I noticed recently there's some buzz about a movie called The Girl With No Name, a Western, I believe. And then there's also a one-hour sci-fi fantasy steampunk series called Evermore. I think those are the two latest projects in the hopper. Am I correct? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Both of these, we've made significant ad- ad- announcements in the past couple months. Um, Girl With No Name is a female driven Western, you know, think of like true grit, um, mm. but with a um, highly visualized style, say a la um, 300 or oh. uh, maybe the Sin City or something like that. So, you know, featured around this young woman protagonist that's like a Katniss Aberdeen, uh, you know, or like a Ripley from Alien. It's a really cool project. Uh, we've got a director um, we've got a producer, uh, a proven director and producer that are, that are, uh, running it. Uh, Legion M has adopted it. We are, um, doing a comic book based on the film and, uh, to start off with. And there's two reasons. One is it helps us generate, um, momentum and interest and buzz that can help make the film, you know, improve the film's prospects, uh, and get it sold to a studio or get it financed. Um, the second thing is, and I think that this is really cool is that the director, like I said, she, she has this really strong vision for how she wants it, uh, stylistically to work. And we recognize that a comic book is a really cool way for her to kind of flush out 
the design aesthetic, um, you know, of the film and experiment with some different stuff and kind of get that honed in. And so um, it's a really cool opportunity. So we're going to be making some announcements um, after uh, the first of the year about the comic book uh, so where you can buy it and get more information. So, you know, that's something that's coming down the pike. Uh, and then the other project that you mentioned is Evermore, which is, uh, this was a project that was brought to us by, um, uh, it's actually two Legion M members who had written it. Oh. And um, uh, it's a one hour series. Uh, it's family friendly, steampunk, sci-fi. Uh, and it, we just announced about two weeks ago at Los Angeles Comic Con that Andrew Cosby, who is the uh, creator of Eureka, um, mm. and the guy that also he just wrote the um, the most recent Hellboy uh, reboot that's coming out, and he's got a couple other actually really big projects that haven't been announced yet, but he signed on to be the showrunner for it, oh. and so that's really exciting for us because you know he's a again he's a big Hollywood name and he's a guy that's out there. Um, has a lot of different opportunities in front of him. And, you know, he's one of those guys, like I mentioned with Elijah Wood and the Spectre Vision team, where we met and we hit it off and he loves what we're doing. And there's so many people. It's, it, it's funny, like one of the advantages that Legion M has yeah. is that when we go out and try and create a movie or TV show um, and we're trying to get talent attached or we're trying to get, you know, Stan Lee for icons, um, we're not approaching people saying, Hey, we're just another production company and we want to do this because we think it's cool and we're going to make some money. Mm -hmm. We are literally able to say that, you know, we're a group of your fans that have pulled our money, um, and want to see this happen. And like, that is immensely powerful for a lot of people. And in particular for the people like Stan and Kevin Smith, who frankly, they, they can do whatever they want, right? Mm -hmm. they've, they've made it. <laughs> in Hollywood. Right. They don't need the money. You know, uh, they can choose whatever project they want to get involved with. And when, you know, there's dozens of people that are trying to get them signed onto their project, but you happen to be the one that is com a fan owned company. Um, so far, it's really shown itself to be an amazing advantage. And I think it's part of the reason why, even though we've been in business for, you know, we've been in Hollywood for two years and we've raised a total of $5 million, which puts us in like the 97th percentile probably of like the people in Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> you know, that have money and decades of experience. And, yeah. um, but we've been able to level up very quickly. And I think it's all because of, you, uh, Phil, and, uh, you know, all the people like you. You Aww, specifically. It's me. It's all on me. <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> no, this is all very uh, exciting. And listeners, if you've listened this far and you aren't excited yet, uh, you must not have a pulse because <laughs> oh, I'm just thrilled about what's going on here. You and Paul Scanlon, the co-founder, and all your team at Legion M are doing such a wonderful job. I'm so proud to be affiliated, and I'm hoping that all the listeners not only go on the website legionm.com to check out all the different projects and, and all the dry 60-page uh, documents that Jeff was mentioning <laughs> earlier, if, if you're so inclined, uh, and I would hope that you would either join as a community member just to kind of try it out, try before you buy, and then hopefully support the uh, organization as well. Jeff, it has been a true pleasure. As soon as I joined up, I said, wait a minute. I've got a podcast. I'm wondering if they'd come on and, and talk about Legion M. I would hope they would, and, and you so graciously agreed to join me today. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Phil. We're, we're, we're thrilled to have you as part of the Legion, and uh, yeah, what can I say other than onward and upward? Indeed. Thanks so much for being on the program, and I wish you and Paul and the rest of the gang much luck. Awesome. All right, Phil. Well, thank you so much for, for your time, and we'll talk soon. I'd like to thank today's guest. Legion M co-founder and all-around great guy Jeff Anison. Jeff, it was fun finding out more about a really cool serial entrepreneur, even though I forgot to ask you if you prefer Cheerios or Cap'n Crunch, and to talk about all things Legion M, a company I know will continue moving forward ever upward, or in the words of the immortal late icon Stan Lee, Excelsior.
We hope you've had a dynamite time listening to this edition of Phil's Pop Culture Podcast. Join us again next time for another stroll down memory lane. Until then, let's be careful out there.